Hey guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 video, and today we are going over the brand new Titan exotic, the Path of Burning Steps. Now this exotic literally just came out, so if you can manage a 1310 loss sector in the EDZ, go farm this out as soon as you can. But without further ado, let's get right into it. The Path of Burning Steps is the new Titan exotic found in the leg armor slot, and it's the first exotic of its kind in that it's specifically designed to counter stasis in PvP. Whether or not it effectively does this is another question, and in addition, it also introduces a brand new perk called Firewalker, which has potential uh, competition with uh, stuff like Phoenix Cradles or Hellfire Heart with specific sunspot builds, but it can also be used on any Titan subclass. So if you wanted to use this with Stasis in the Crucible, you could. If you want to use it with, for example, Thundercrash for whatever reason, you can go ahead and do that. There's a lot of variability and options with this exotic, which is really nice to see. But today, we're going to see how this exotic stacks up and performs in PvE and PvP and figure out how it compares to other exotics. Um, starting off though, and reading the actual description of the exotic perk Firewalker, Solar Final Blows periodically grant you an escalating bonus to weapon damage. Also, you are harder to slow or freeze with stasis, and when you break out, you take no damage from doing so, creating a burst of solar energy around yourself. Now, on paper, this sounds fantastic. And, I mean, it, it really sounds like a top tier contender for PvP. But, through testing, as you'll see in the background, there's a lot left to be desired. But let's examine why that is. So, the perk Firewalker is triggered when you're slowed or you're frozen, as well as whenever you are um, getting a kill with a solar illumination, whether that's a weapon or an ability. Um, I will say, though, quick note, uh, periodically, whenever it says solar final blows periodically give you that escalating weapon damage and everything, it's about 50%. Through testing, through running it in PvE, I found that about every two kills or so is when you're getting that increase in perk and it goes up to times four. So just don't expect it to happen every single time. And you can have times where you get it after getting four kills, you can have times when you don't even get to times three after ten kills. It's completely random and that RNG aspect isn't always the best, especially in the Crucible. But how Firewalker itself works is that when you're hit with a slowed ability or you're hit, um, for example, with a Glacial Nade and you're frozen, it procs Firewalker. Firewalker's main effect on stasis is that your slowed count is halved with this exotic. Uh, any stasis ability that gives you that slowed count and slowed effect, such as a Dustfield Grenade, a Hunter Melee ability, a Titan Shoulder Charge briefly, these stacks of slowed are cut in half. So as a normal dust field deals just over 100 throughout its entire duration if you're in it, if you survive an entire dust field with this on, you only get to 52. And so this really cuts down on gameplay revolving around dust field grenades, primarily with hunters because they have multiple abilities that all deal slowed effects, and a number of them are at decent ranges, enabling effective playstyles. So for a hunter to freeze you instantly with dust field grenades, they'd have to throw a dust field grenade, they'd have to hit you, um, with both their shurikens, which in total with this exotic do 40 slowed count instead of 80 normally, as well as dodge to actually get that final bump in slowed count to near instantly freeze you. And that's all of their utility compared to typically when if they just get you in a dust field grenade and throw twice really quick, they can freeze you. So this exotic really hits those dust field centered playstyles with stasis in PvP. Quick note about the damage buff too. Again, this could be procced from solar illumination, so if you want to rock this with like sunspots, for example, you totally can in PvP. Or you can actually just use stasis and use a solar weapon to proc it. When it's procced, it is a 20% weapon increase. So this is actually equal to sunspots if you're using sunspots also in PvP. Quick note, sunspots and this do not stack. <laughs> Believe me, that was my first question when I saw it. I tested it. Doesn't work. 20% buff is pretty decent. It's something like Igneous Hammer, which can also proc the perk. It allows an Igneous Hammer to two tap, doing 108 to the crit. In terms of the perk itself helping with stasis though, when you're slowed, it really has a good benefit. Whenever you're frozen, its secondary benefit isn't always the best. Effectively what it does is when you break out of stasis, you have that breakout damage completely nulled. You have no breakout damage and then Whenever you do break out, there's that splash of solar damage that it says in the description. This actually changes with the times four Firewalker stacks. This is where that actually comes in in PvP because as the simple one stack up to four stacks is a flat 20% buff 
in PvP. One stack, whenever you're frozen, let's say someone's pushing you when you're frozen, you break out, you have that one stack, you break out, that solar explosion is going to do about 103 damage, and the range of it is a little inconsistent. I've had times where, independent of how many stacks, it hits at 5 meters, I've had times where it hits at 2, I've had times where it seemingly completely misses whoever's right next to me. And this was at, you know, times 4 really close, times one like five meters it's very inconsistent in range but the damage scales very specifically so at one stack it's 103 and all the way up to four it goes to 201 which is enough to one shot 10 resilience guardians across the board uh, typically though you're not going to survive getting frozen or slowed four times one of those is going to kill you especially when you consider that you have to get frozen again or have a RNG solar kill to reproc the ability. It's unlikely that you're going to get to times four, especially in PvP. Um, in PvE, it's much easier to achieve, especially with uh, already present solar builds in the game. But in PvP, it's fairly decent. Again, the problem with the perk is that it's RNG based for eliminations, and you do have to be using solar weapons. For the season, something like Igneous Hammer, that's perfectly fine. I mean, half the people are using that anyway. But you do have to rely on getting eliminations fairly quickly with that and the problem with getting frozen is typically when you're frozen you're going to die 99 percent of the time no one's really going to let you just break out and then approach them or if they do freeze you they're not always going to run right up to you and just wait there they're typically going to go to really fast swap option or like a glacial slide or a shatter dive to finish you off very quickly and again this exotic doesn't help with your breakout time if you get frozen by a glacial grenade, your breakout time is still 5 seconds. If you get frozen by a warlock staff, you're still frozen for 1.4 seconds. It doesn't help you break out any faster, at least not from my testing. It wasn't anything significant or noteworthy. It's just when you do break out. And that's really a problem because, again, especially in higher level PvP, when you are frozen, you are dead. Many people just take their hands off the keyboard and take a second because it's that severe. And this doesn't really help you break out, it just helps you when you do break out. And that's the main issue. Um, again, it is really neat though that you can rock this with other subclasses. I thought this was going to be exclusive to something like Sunspots, for example, on the uh, Sunbreaker Titans. But you can totally rock this with Stasis and then kind of run around freezing people while you yourself have benefits from being frozen, if that makes sense. Uh, I do want to point out, when you are frozen, the Hellfire perk itself has a random chance to give you that damage buff. So there is a chance that when you break out, you get that 20% weapon buff. But again, it's it's random. You don't know if you're going to have it. So in PvP, I think it's good, but it's definitely not a meta maker, quote unquote. Um, and realistically, getting frozen is not something that you want to build a benefit around. It I think it'd be much better if it just simply uh, helps you break out faster or gave you an overshield when you broke out for example i think it'd be a lot better just because when you are frozen you're going to die most of the time another thing that i did test is if when you're slowed you actually move faster one of the biggest things was with a uh, silence and squall on hunters that slowing after effect is very very deadly and unless you have a movement option to get out of it you're going to die as soon as it touches you this does again cut the slowed effects in half so you won't get frozen by this but you don't move any faster so you'll still die to the natural base damage which again is a little bit unfortunate because in the areas when you are slowed you're still just as vulnerable it just takes more of that effect or a longer duration of that effect to actually freeze you so it's decent i would say moving on into pve though um, being frozen basically never happens outside of messing around in an empire hunt for a little bit and its damage of that solar explosion when you do get frozen is equal to a thermite grenade at best even at times like two or three i tried testing out a solo empire hunt to see if i can get to times four being frozen that often and just seeing that damage effect but again it's really hard to do in pve and that damage is so limited in its range and its actual potency that it's not even worth considering if you're going to be rocking this for the fire explosion in pve what you are going to want to do is use this with an already existing solar build and for titans i would recommend just simply swapping out phoenix cradle if you feel like putting this on for a little bit and rocking with this um, the buff that you get at times four is a 35% weapon buff, which is actually on par with stuff like Weapons of Light, and is even better 
than something like Well of Radiance, for example. And having that just simply for getting solar kills, which again, if you already have a solar build with Phoenix Cradles, for example, is something you're doing all of the time, and you're still getting Sun War, you're just not getting it for 10 seconds. Um, getting to times 4 is very, very easy. You have 35% damage buff, and again, Sunspot Hammers work really well with this, but you can use any class. If you want to do for whatever reason, you can run Bubble, you can run Thunder Crash, you can run Stasis if you wanted to. There's all these different options you can do. I will say though, this does not stack with other buffs in the game. You can't have times four and then go into a bubble, believe me, I already tried just to make sure. Um, which is a little disappointing because I actually thought when this first was implemented it might have worked as a solar version of Backrest for Hunters, where there's that 10% extra buff that stacks universally, but I guess it's just a Hunter exclusive at this point. But overall, it's pretty good in PvE. In terms of comparing it to other exotics, I think it's decent. It's no top tier, it's not a meta maker, especially in PvP, but it's good at what it does. Again, Sun Warrior PvE is where I think this mainly shines, as getting frozen in PvP is a death sentence, and it basically nullifies a lot of the other benefits that this comes with. And in terms of the weapon damage, it's 20%, and you're getting a RNG chance to get it after every kill instead of using something like Sun Warrior where if you get an ability kill you have that Sunspot guarantee. Not only does that Sunspot um, then heal you, it gives you a 20% weapon damage equal to this in PvP. That Sunspot can damage other players that go into it and Sunspots also give you Sun Warrior which then regens all of your abilities. So if you're going to go with like a solar build in PvP, Sunspot's going to be your best bet for Titan. In PvE though, if you want just simply more base damage, swap Phoenix out for this, and your 20% buff is now a 35% buff, and it's incredibly potent. I will say though, I'm going to personally be rocking Phoenix Cradle still, just because I do enjoy the ability regen that Sun Warrior offers, and I feel like simply using Phoenix to extend that longevity to you and your allies is simply way better than what this can offer. But again, I still think it's a decent exotic definitely something that you want to have don't just brush it off as say oh, i'll get it you know a couple months down the road when they're selling it get this exotic now it's really fun to play with uh, i just don't think it's going to be really making any waves in the meta anytime soon but hey you know what someone might find something that's absolutely busted and i might be eating my words but i look forward to that day um, it's definitely something that i think is a good addition to the titan exotic collection but yeah, if you guys like the video, uh, be sure to hit the like button below and subscribe for more Destiny 2 content. Uh, just a future update, I'm currently working on a Void Titan PvE build, along with the other builds in my series, like the God of Thunder and Praise the Sun builds that I released before. And this one's utilizing some new seasonal mods found in the artifact. So I'm very excited to bring you that uh, probably within the next week. But thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for the exotic review. Hope you liked it. Uh, be sure to have a great day and take care.